The Born-Haber cycle is going to be the topic of this lesson, and it turns out we use the Born-Haber cycle to measure lattice energies. It turns out they can't be measured directly, so we measure them indirectly using Hess's law uh, in the context of this Born-Haber cycle. And this is a major pain point for general chemistry students, so we're going to demystify it, we are going to break it down, and you're going to have a much better handle on it when we finish this lesson. Now, my name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. This is part of my brand new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons several a week throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. So let's get into this. So we'll just start with just a quick reminder of what lattice energy is. And lattice energy is just when you pull apart an ionic compound, a solid ionic compound, into its gaseous ions. And the stronger the ionic bonds and the more stable the ionic solid, then the greater that lattice energy is going to be. But in this case, again, we can't actually measure this directly in the lab, and so we're going to come up with this Born-Haber cycle, this process to pull it off. And the key to this is that we actually can measure, if we combine sodium solid and chlorine gas, we can make solid sodium chloride, and we know the delta H for this. It turns out we can just combine these in lab and actually directly measure delta H with a bomb calorimeter. All right, so that delta H is negative 411 kilojoules. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use Hess's law here. We're actually going to do this exact reaction, but break it up into a series of steps where the total delta H for the entire process is going to be this negative 411 kilojoules according to Hess's law. And what's cool is that we're going to know the delta H's from tabulated values and stuff for every single step except for the one that's going to be related to the lattice energy and that's what's going to allow us to calculate it. And so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to start with sodium metal and we're going to start off with half a mole of Cl2 gas, start off with our reactants here. And then in the end, we are going to make some NaCl solid. And so as long as we start here and end here, the delta H for that entire process is going to be negative 411 kilojoules. But again, instead of doing it in a single step, we're going to do it in multiple steps. And the key is this, the very last step here is going to involve gaseous sodium ions and gaseous chloride ions being combined to form NaCl. And if you notice, NaCl solid turning into the gaseous ions, if we went backwards, that's lattice energy. And so in this calculation, that's all going to add up to negative 411 kilojoules. The very last step is simply going to be the subtraction of the lattice energy, since it's the exact reverse of the lattice energy. So again, in the reverse direction, that's lattice energy. So this direction would be the subtraction, the exact negative of the lattice energy. All right, so the rest of this really then comes down to just turning sodium solid into sodium ions that are gaseous and turning diatomic chlorine gas into gaseous chloride ions. And then we're done actually. And we'll just add up all the steps and they're gonna add up to negative 411 and this will be the only one we don't know. All right, so we'll start with the sodium solid here. And for the sodium solid, first thing we gotta do is get everything in the gas phase. So if it's not there in the gas phase, that's the first thing coming. And so we're gonna turn that into the gas phase and it turns out uh, turning that in the gas phase is just the delta H of formation of sodium gas. Delta H of formation, as you recall, is just when you can form one mole of whatever you're talking about from its individual elements in their standard state. And the standard state's the solid for sodium. That's its uh, standard form at room temperature. And so that's why this is just equal to the delta H of formation. And we can look this up in a, a book. It's already been measured for us. And we're going to then turn this sodium uh, gaseous sodium atom into a gaseous sodium ion. And to pull that off, we need to lose an electron to form a cation. And you might recall that this is what ionization energy is. And so in this case, that's going to be the ionization energy of sodium. We might call it the first ionization energy of sodium, losing the first electron. And again, that's been tabulated. That's been measured. We can look that up in a table. And then we're halfway there. We've got the sodium exactly where we need it to complete formation of NaCl. Now, the diatomic is going to provide a little bit of a wrinkle here because we don't need diatomic. We just have a single chloride ion. And so the first thing I'm going to have to do is take half a mole of diatomic chlorine and turn it into just Cl gas. So it turns out that chlorine is a diatomic because it's more stable and lower energy as a diatomic. So this is going to be an endothermic process. And this is simply also going to be a delta H of formation, in this case of Cl gas. And it turns out that's been tabulated, that's been measured. We can look it up in a book or in a table. 
Uh, and we're halfway there to forming the chloride ion gas and to form the chloride ion gas now. Now we just need to add an electron, to gain an electron. That's not ionization energy, that's electron affinity. And again, that's reported in a table as well. And so now we've really broken this up into five steps. One, two, three, four, five. And all five of those steps are gonna add up to negative 411 kilojoules. And the key is we can find all four of these in tables and then we can mathematically determine this guy right here. So let me go get these values out of some tables. All right, so now I've got the individual values here. Here's the delta H of formation for sodium gas at 108 kilojoules, the delta H of formation of Cl gas at 122 kilojoules, the first ionization energy for sodium at 496 kilojoules, and the electron affinity of chlorine at negative 349 kilojoules. And so again, all five of these steps add up to this reaction right here. And so all five of these individual values are gonna add up to negative 411 kilojoules. And the only one we don't know is that minus lattice energy. So that's the basis of our calculation here. So in this case, we're gonna have 108 kilojoules plus 122 kilojoules plus 496 kilojoules minus 349 kilojoules minus the lattice energy, which could just make that minus X. And this equals a grand total of negative 411 kilojoules. If you go ahead and solve for lattice energy here, you're going to get 788 kilojoules. So if you take and move all of this stuff over to the other side, you'd end up with negative lattice energy equals negative 788 kilojoules, which means that the lattice energy equals 788 kilojoules. And that's all there is to it. So, uh, every ionic compound is going to have a very, very similar setup to this. Uh, nothing more to it than this. Uh, hopefully we've demystified it a little bit, uh, but this is the process and this is an example of the calculation. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like and a share goes a long ways to making sure YouTube shares this lesson with other students as well. And if you are looking for general chemistry quizzes, practice tests, practice final exams, final exam rapid reviews, then check out my general chemistry master course. I'll leave a link in the description. A free trial is available. Happy studying.